Good morning. On this day after Thanksgiving, as it's known, or Black Friday, whichever, uh, we're going to look at Ezekiel 37 through 39. And Ezekiel 37 begins with the, the story of the Valley of Dry Bones. And I, I love the imagery of this, of this story. Uh, Ezekiel is taken out, uh, and he looks over this huge valley. Uh, of dry bones, you know, of skeletons, you know, not even skeletons, but just bones scattered and piled all over. And God asks, can these bones live? And Ezekiel's response, you know, Lord. I mean, it, it's up to you. You have the power, Lord. I, if they live, it will be up to you. And God says, prophesy to these bones. And, and Ezekiel does, as God said, and the bones start to come together there's a clattering and yeah i can just i mean in in my mind i can hear the noise of all of these bones you know the piles of bones separating and coming and coming together that way and and then you know muscles and sinews and flesh come upon these bones and they are there lifeless and and then you know god says you know prophesy again and the four winds come, you know, sim sim signifying God's presence all over. You know, the, the four winds come from all directions at the same time. And, and life, breath comes into these, these beings, these, these bodies that were there that, I mean, and, and I, you know, before breath comes, I, I kind of picture a, a bunch of mannequins standing there or, you know, like in a wax museum, you know, the, the figures that look so real, but, but they're not. Um, uh, or, or even, you know, statues, you know, they're, they're lifeless. And I've always pictured them standing, you know, this, as the bones come together, I've always pictured in my mind them standing. But as this, as this, in verse 10, it says, I prophesied, the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet. And it just, I mean, that, that, that today, for whatever reason, they stood on their feet. I pictured them all, at, you know, standing up there, you know, that, you know, they'd been laying scattered just like these bones had been, but they stand and they live. And, and this, this is God's way of saying to the people of Israel, I will gather you back together. You will again be a people united. Israel, as a nation, you will again live. And then it goes on. Uh, you know, and he says that, you know, this is the whole house of Israel. You know, they say our bones are dried up. We're, we, you know, we just have no hope. But God says to them um, in verse 14, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I shall place you on your own soil. And then the next part, starting in verse 15, as God says again to Ezekiel, take two sticks and, and they will join together. And this is symbolizes the the reunification of of Israel, no longer the northern kingdom, southern kingdom, but Israel as one nation, ruled by one person, led by God Himself, and and so again, it's it's the picture to these people of Israel that that you know that they're not out of favor well they're out of favor with god but god will gather them back together there will be forgiveness there will be grace and and they will again be a people and the nations will see who god is you know verse 22 i will make them one nation in the land and on the mountains of israel one king shall be king over all and never again will they be two nations never again will they be divided into two kingdoms they will be my people, God says, and I will be their God in verse 23. And then he, you know, talks about my servant David will be king over them. And, you know, it's, you know, this, the descending kings, you know, the descendants of King David will, will rule there. In verse 27, my dwelling place will be with them. I will be their God. They will be my people. Then the nations will know that I, the Lord, sanctify the people of Israel. And my sanctuary, and I will dwell among them. So God says, I will set apart these people, sanctify, you know, set them apart, make them holy, uh, unite them. They will, they will be mine, you know, and I'll set them apart from their sins. And then verses or chapters 37 and 38 uh, are, are God's words to Gog and Magog and, you know, the, these enemy armies that are coming against Israel. And, um, how they, they come and they, they gather together and, you know, and it says, mortal, set your face toward them 
and prophesy against them and say this, the Lord God says, I am against you. And, and so, boo, you know, have God against you. I've you know, commented on that before, how horrible that would be to, to have God against us rather than, you know, have God for us and God on our side. Uh, but but these the kings and the princes of Gog and Magog, these other countries, gather uh, tremendous numbers of people, tremendous armies, and they come. And, you know, it, they're, they're with bucklers and helmets and all of these troops and everything, a mighty, impressive, and formidable army, uh, one that would strike terror in the hearts of of all people, especially, you know, a small nation like the people of Israel. Um, and he, he says to these, to these enemy armies, you will advance coming on like a storm. You will come like a cloud covering the land, you and all your troops and all your people with you, you know, and, but then on that day, thoughts will come into your mind and you will devise an evil scheme and you will say, I will go up against this land, this of Israel this unwalled villages, and I will fall upon these quiet people who live in safety, and I'm going to we'll take them all captive and rule over them and plunder and seize them. You know, this is, you know, the, the invasion that, that these leaders have planned as they come toward Israel, you know. And then verse 14 again, prophesy, mortal, and say, thus says the Lord, on that day when my people are living securely, you will rouse yourself and you will come out of the remotest parts of the north, you and many with them, you know, and I will display my holiness before their eyes. You know, it's just, I mean, it's kind of a, a warning, a threat, you know, from God, or maybe we should just say a promise from God that they're not going to be uh, successful in that. And he says, are you, thus says the Lord, are you, of whom I spoke in former days by my servants who prophesied for years that I would bring you against them. On that day when God comes against them, my wrath shall be aroused. You know, God's anger is going to come upon these foreign invaders and there will be a shaking of the land of the sea and all of this will happen. In verse 21, I will summon the sword against Gog in all my mountains. The swords of all will be against their comrades. With pestilence and bloodshed, I will enter the judgment. And I will pour down torrential rains and hailstones. I mean, terrible things that God is going to do to this invading army. And I will display my greatness and holiness. They will know then that I am the Lord. And so then, you know, the, these enemies will be totally destroyed. And the destruction is, is complete, you know. And they're starting in verse 9, uh, you know, this is the aftermath of this battle where God has totally defeated the enemies of Israel. Those who go out, who live in the towns, will go out and make fires of the weapons and burn them, bucklers and shields. They will have enough wood for seven years. You think about, I mean, the the chariots, the wheels, the the siege weapons, the, the clubs, the, the arrows. The, I mean, how much for seven years? I mean... You know, whether they needed a lot of wood for heat or not is immaterial, but seven years worth of wood, even just for their cooking fires, would be a tremendous amount of wood. And they're not going to have to go out and cut down the forest or trees or really search for anything because it will be there. And then it will take the Israelites seven months to bury all of the dead. I mean, this is just a tremendous numbers of people, you know, and... Seven months the house of Israel will spend burying them in order to cleanse the land. In verse 12, it says that. And then going on in verse 14, it says, For seven months they shall make search for more bones and more, you know, evidence of these enemies. This is, you know, God is saying, I am going to show my power and I am going to reunite the people of Israel, even though you're scattered, even though you seem to have no hope. Going back to chapter 37 with the, village, with the vision of dry bones and the two sticks coming together, you know, it all comes to show that, that God is favoring his people Israel and he will bring them back together from, you know, to be, again, to be his people. And in chapter 39, again, it ends with, such a positive note for the Israelites. Um, 
I will gather my people from exile, and I will gather them into their own land. I will leave none behind, and I will never again hide my face from them. I will pour out my spirit upon the house of Israel, says the Lord. And so the, the promise from God to these people of Israel, these exiles, is that he will bring them back together. He will reunite them as a nation, and he will be with them. And such a powerful thing that is to have God with you.